So for our purposes here for this particular lecture, I have gone ahead and unminified the HTML code. That'll make it, things easier for you to see and to read and to understand. JavaScript, just the general box here is ticked, not excluding anything. And CSS is also ticked. It's just, those are general optimizations, and those have been applied. So let's jump over into the uh, source code and have a look and see what that looks like. So you can see, there's our single, aggregated, concatenated, and minified CSS file. It's all smooshed together, all the way down to the bottom. Also, we have our concatenated JavaScript file, which is also minified, smooshed together. All the spaces are removed. So that's fantastic. Or is it? Let's, uh, let's run a test and see what we get. Uh-oh, we've got eliminating, we've got a should fix. Eliminate render blocking JavaScript and CSS in above the fold content. And look what it is. It's our single it's an aggregated, concatenated, and minified CSS file. So we don't want that either. See how much that affected our mobile grade? We're still all right there for desktop, but I mean, even that could be better. Remember, we want these grades to be as high as they can possibly be. But for mobile, it makes a, a really big impact. So how do we get rid of that? Well, advanced, we're going to do CSS first, and we're going to do JavaScript later. The, our first option to get rid of the single blocking CSS resource in above the fold content. That is dealt with. There's an option to deal with that here in Auto Optimize, and it is the inline and defer CSS option under CSS options. See here, inline above the fold CSS. So once we tick that, we are given a text box in which to enter our above the fold CSS. Well, AJ, what in the world is that? Well, that is a fantastic question and uh, it, it stumps a lot of people that attempt to use this feature. Don't let this intimidate you, however, though it is actually extremely easy to use. And here is how. There is a critical CSS path generator. Remember that critical CSS we talked about, the critical render path above the fold? Well, this generator will help you identify which parts of this single combined concatenated and minified CSS file are critical to rendering everything above the fold and by making use of the inline and defer option we will inline everything critical to rendering everything above the fold and we will defer the remainder of that gigantic CSS file. So I'm going to show how do we use this file in this or this uh, generator. This generator, uh, I will include a link to this obviously in the addendum to the section. So how do we use this? Well, easily. We go back into our source code, okay? And we have this single combined CSS file here, that style sheet. So we'll click on it and we are going to take everything that is in this file and copy it all the way down. Copy that. Go back into your critical CSS path generator and enter the page for which you wish to create your critical path CSS, which will be your full CSS, everything you just copied, everything I just copied, 
We'll go in here, and paste that. It's all in there. And you click Create Critical Path CSS. And there you have it. So you can see that we went from over 200,000 characters all the way down to just over 12,000 characters. And those 12,000 characters are necessary to render everything above the fold. So we'll take that and copy it, go back into Auto Optimize, and paste that copied critical above the fold CSS into the text field. After you do so, save changes and empty the cache. Don't forget to empty your W3 total cache caches as well. And go back into your site's source. Actually, you want to go back to your site. Do a hard refresh. Remember, you were using an incognito window. See this guy in Chrome. Do a hard refresh. Check out the page real quick, make sure everything looks as it should look, and it does. Go back into the source code. And you see here, everything that we copied, oops, everything that we copied from here and subsequently entered In the inline end of her CSS text field now appears in our source code as critical above the fold CSS. Where does that end here? Style ends there. So you, you can see that no longer do we have that single render blocking HTTP request file for our CSS. Everything that is necessary to render above the fold content has been inserted in line. And then the CSS file, the remainder of it, this here, the style sheet that we copied and put in there is deferred until after onload. You can see it's deferred there. There's our CSS file again. So let's see what kind of result this gives us if we go back to PageSpeed Insights. Rerun this test. Look at that. That's, ex that's precisely what we want. Our grade went from that ugly yellow warning, semi-warning, back up to that very pretty green there. That being said, let's go back into the site. And uh, navigate to another page and do a hard refresh. Something's wrong here. Our, uh, again, jQuery dependent text, you can see there's a style issue here. It's bigger than it should be. And what this indicates, you know, you might, you don't, may not be using, uh, you may not be using something like responsive text, but if you find a problem on, on, on a subsequent page, different a page that is stylistically different, we actually have uh, quite a few stylistic differences from page to page here. Did you see that flash? When I did a hard refresh, that's called a flash of unstyled content, or F-O-U-C, or a flash of unstyled text, F-O-U-C. The problem here is that this single block of 
inline CSS gets globally applied to every single page on your website. So while we see that for the home page, it works fantastically, nothing is, nothing is broken. If we go to other pages on our website and do a hard refresh, you can see that the load's funny. And this may happen for you as well if you have uh, different styling from page to page. And this is can be really pronounced here when you go to uh, blog pages. You see how that just loads funny. It's not supposed to look like that. So how do you solve that issue? Well, let's let's solve that issue in the next lecture.